Welcome to the Pomerantz Mentor presented by ProScan and today's vignette is going to focus on the role of contrast in medical imaging for the practicing physician or doctor and how to do it. This is a question that we frequently get asked. Let's start out though by differentiating the two major advanced imaging modalities which are a CAT scan or a CT computed tomography, which is basically a fancy x-ray, and an MRI or magnetic resonance imaging study, which is basically a microwave and a magnet, each one producing unique cross-sectional imaging. What are the general strengths of CT or a CAT? Speed. You can perform a neck to pelvis CT now once the patient is on the table in less than 30 seconds routinely. Cost. These studies themselves are cheaper and the cost of equipment acquisition is frequently cheaper. It's easy to perform and reproduce by the technologist. Not so for an MRI, which is much more technologist dependent. It's better for calcification detection in the soft tissues especially. There's less claustrophobia and it's easier for a patient to cooperate for a CT. They don't have to lie in the scanner as long. Contrast that is used for CT is cheaper to purchase. It's also cheaper to pay for by the patient. There's better detection of air, or gas, which may be manifestations of an early or subtle infection, so important to detect. And with injuries where blood is very, very fresh, especially in the brain, CT may be easier to interpret by the non-experienced person than an MRI. What are the general strengths of an MRI? Well, it provides superb and better soft tissue contrast resolution. And what I mean by soft tissues is the non-skeletal structures, the non-calcified structures. Now that doesn't mean that MR is not very good to excellent for skeletal structures. In fact, it is superior to CT when you're in the medullary central cancellous and osteal bone. But CT is better when you're in the bone shell, the cortical bone. It's easy to perform vascular imaging without the injection of contrast on MRI. In other words, you can make an angiogram on an MRI without making an injection. This you cannot do on a CT. A huge advantage of MRI, huge is that there is no ionizing radiation. And this is so important for youths, for people of childbearing age. This is not something that can be easily avoided on CT. The contrast volume on an MRI is lower than that for CT. CT contrast volumes may vary from 50 to 100 cc's or cubic centimeters. Whereas on an MRI, the volume rarely goes above 20 cc's. So for an individual that has heart problems that can't tolerate high volume loads of contrast, MR is preferred. It is a superb technique for detecting subacute and chronic blood. In other words, blood that's at least 12 to 24 hours to three days on. Whereas CT and MRI both do an excellent job of detecting very fresh blood within hours, but MR requires more expertise in identifying hyperacute, very fresh blood. As stated, MRI is an unbelievable bone marrow evaluator so good that it is often replaced nuclear medicine bone scintigraphy. It is not affected by bone and it is not 
that affected by patient size or the body habitus as much as CT is. When you have structures that get in the way of the beam in CT and attenuate that X-ray beam, it may produce some distortion in the tissues underneath, and this is known as beam hardening artifact. MRI is a better test for cooperative patients without claustrophobia as a general rule of thumb, whereas CT is a better test for patients who are less cooperative or who can't lie still or who have claustrophobia. What does contrast do? Why do we actually use contrast? Well, it can shorten an exam. It can improve diagnostic specificity. It can improve sensitivity. It can help exclude certain pathologies. It can improve image quality, especially on MRI, where it improves the overall signal of the image. But it's true on CT as well. It may improve the differentiation of tumors from non-tumoral lesions or masses. And it may improve the differentiation of aggressive from non-aggressive tumors. And these facts are true to varying degrees with most modalities. So why don't we always use contrast? Well, we usually don't need it. In fact, the more experienced the reader and the facility, the less the need for a contrast agent. There can be a tenfold difference in a physician's and their facility's need to use contrast from one facility to the other based on experience. Contrast is costly. There are some co contrast agents that for a 20 cc vial, it may be $100 just to procure the contrast. It requires an IV injection, an IV preparation, which patients don't usually enjoy. Patients don't like needles. Contrast agents have common and sometimes unique contrast reactions. We'll discuss some of these in MRI and CT and what the differences are, but they can affect the kidneys and the soft tissues and nerves and even occasionally cause heart failure due to volume overload, a complication that's more common with CT contrast because there's a higher volume that's given. MR has a very rare but unique contrast reaction that really only occurs in patients who have severely malfunctioning kidneys. On the other hand, CT has a contrast reaction known as anaphylaxis or severe allergy which can very rarely occur with MRI. It's rare with CT, but still more common with CT and can result in low blood pressure and even death. The use of contrast is inversely proportional to the experience of the reader and the facility as previously stated. And that's why I strongly recommend that when you don't know whether to give it, you consult your imaging expert that you rely on to see what their level of need and comfort is for that contrast agent. But in future vignettes, we're going to share with you some important guidelines and some standards of care in each of the organ systems and even drill into specific disease processes. I look forward to sharing these with you. Thanks and have a great day.